Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a sneak peek at some of the new rules for the Jade Obelisk Warcry Warband. It's been great to see so much content for Warcry lately, and with Sundered Fate about to be available to pre-order, it's been good to have a good look at the two warbands. I've already gone through the Hunters of Huanchi, and this is funny, I mentioned that I thought they sounded like a kitchen appliance company. I actually had a look since I did the last video, and Huanchi make ball bearings in China for all different kind of kitchen appliances. So that's really funny. But let's get back to the warband that could be the worst ever Valentine's date. And we'll have a good look at the fighter card that we saw in the article from the Warhammer community site today. And some of the other rules included in reaction too. We'll check the models out again really quick though. I've covered it before in some of the other videos, but if you haven't seen it, this is the Jade Obelisk Warband Leader, a Nephrite Priestess. So this is awesome. She's a zealot who likes to cut the still beaten hearts from her enemies. Once those hearts are fleshly plucked out, she feeds them to the avian idolarchs that are also included in the warband. And here's that model in the top right. Really cool they've included this in there. I think this is a great move. Goes so well against the other Hunters of Huanchi models. And this is a really great pair up. I think they've done a really good job with this set. A great looking archer there as well. Really cool pose. I quite like the background behind this warband. It tells us in the Warhammer community article that they've made a pact with an enigmatic entity known as the Speaker in the Stone. And because of that pact, the cultists of the Jade Obelisk are then afflicted with a curse that slowly turns them into stone. So that's pretty interesting. And yeah, I like this idea. And you can really see that theme coming through in the masks, part of their body, and also in their weapons as well. The reason these characters are in the Narwood is because they're there to smash up the Eye of Kotex. So their purpose in life is to pulverise monuments of all those who oppose them. I like this theme, I think it's pretty fun and a good way to incorporate some different weapons. We've got the chisel as you can see here, picks, hammers, all sorts, also being protected by those archers and a little bit of magic going on too. Let's have a look at the reaction for the Jade Obelisk. Of course they can use the universal reactions too, but this is the one specifically for them and it's for everyone with the Jade Obelisk room mark. And here we go, the Curse of Jade. A fighter can make this reaction when they are targeted by a melee attack action, but before the hit rolls are made. Subtract one from the damage points allocated to this fighter by each hit and critical hit from that attack action to a minimum of one. Not super exciting, but I guess when we see all the fighter cards, we can just get a good idea of how many wounds they have. That'll give us a, a better clue as to how good this is going to be. But yeah, pretty bland. I may, may have wanted something a bit more special and, and that fitted in more with their narrative. But there we go. That's the reaction they're going to get. Let's have a look at one of the abilities next. So this is going to be for the Priestess, I'm guessing, because we've got the Faction Room Mark and the Priest Room Mark there. So this is a triple called Bloody Tribute. And a fighter can only use this ability if an enemy fighter has been taken down by them this activation. Pick a friendly fighter within 9 inches of a visible friendly fighter with the Jade Obelisk and Icon Bearer Room Marks. That fighter makes a bonus move action. All right, so right away there's a condition. This fighter has to take down an enemy fighter. I don't like that condition in these abilities. And so it's a shame it starts with that. And then they've got to pick a friendly fighter that's got the icon bearer room mark as well. And so they've got to be within nine inches. So there we've got another condition. And if there's only one model with the icon bearer room mark, then you're certainly going to have to be thinking about pairing these up with the different deployments. So yeah, that's going to be a tactic right away that I think we're going to have to go with if, of course, we want to use this ability. But that fighter, if you meet those two conditions, they're then going to be able to make a bonus move action. So get them into a, a different position and then maybe they can use some of their abilities when they activate then to help some of the other friendly fighters or even make some attacks themselves against the enemy. We got to see another ability, and this is for anyone with the faction room art there. And this is a double called Stone Warp. A fighter can only use this ability if they are within 9 inches of a visible friendly fighter with the Jade Obelisk and Icon Bearer room marks. Remove a number of damage points allocated to this fighter equal to half the value of this ability, rounding up. 
if this fighter is also within six inches of a friendly fighter with the Jade Obelisk and Priest Rue marks, remove a number of damage points allocated to this fighter equal to the value of this ability instead. So, well, we've got a few conditions here again, and it is tying us in with that Icon Bearer Rue mark which the obelisk bearer is going to be having, I guess. So he's really important. He's going to be key to everything here, it looks like. And so you're going to get half. So, you know, the chances of getting fives and sixes for doubles is pretty high. So a really good chance you're going to be using this a lot and healing quite a lot of wounds with that. So that's really nice. Then that's just provided you only have him within nine inches. But if you're within six inches of the priestess, then she's going to allow you to get the full five or six. So you haven't got to halve it. So that's pretty interesting. So really, although they look pretty tough and those weapons look like they're going to deal a lot of damage, it looks like the, the main mechanic for these guys is just to keep healing themselves and you want to be almost surrounding that that um, obelisk bearer, protecting him so he can protect you and give you that buff to your health. This is going to be pretty interesting when they go up against Huanchi, who can be a bit slimy, a bit slippery, and so with their abilities they can kind of disengage during an attack even, um, if a, a few attacks are coming their way. And so they could potentially get quite close to this guy and pick him uh, off with a few points as well with some of their ranged weapons maybe. So I could certainly see him being a target early on. And with that in mind, you'd probably be hoping he's going to come in maybe in round two onwards, perhaps, and not right up front. So that's something to think about too. So we've got a fighter card to look at now. This is for one of the Desecrators, they're called. So you can see here that the Desecrator is going to be 1,000 points. He's got the rune mark there for the Jade Obelisk, and he's also got another rune mark. This is the Destroyer rune mark, so that gives you an idea of the type of character he is. And then he's got a movement of three. That's terrible. So he's certainly going to be slow. His toughness is four, which is okay. 12 wounds then. So that's all right. That's all right. 100 points, 12 wounds. So already we're seeing them slower than the Huanchi, but a little bit tougher and with a few more wounds as well. Although these are a few more points up for the one we compared to yesterday. He's got this massive double-handed hammer. You've got to be an inch away to use it. He's going to get three attacks though, so that's not bad for such a heavy weapon. And then that's strength five, which makes sense for the type of weapon it is. And then damage-wise, it's going to do three points on a normal hit and five points on a critical hit. There's potential for some pretty good damage there if he can get close enough. So that's going to be the challenge with these two warbands. I like it when they put a slow, um, heavy... Uh, like strong warband against one that's a lot more slippery and fuss. So I think it's a really good pair. I think it's going to be interesting to play them. Be cool to see the rest of the fighter cards though for totally make up our mind, but a nice insight into how they're going to work. And yeah, I hope there's more options so it really doesn't keep tying us in to that obelisk bearer. I'd like to see a bit more flexibility allowed. But normally with these sets now, you're getting pretty close to bang on a thousand points for the models they include in the set. So maybe not many of them are going to be very high. The obelisk bearer could be one of the highest, but we'll just have to wait to see. So there we go. That's all the information we got in the Warhammer Community article today for the Jade Obelisk. Be great if the next set gives us some terrain that they could actually look to smash up. Maybe another statue. Remember that statue from the first Warcry box? One of my favourite pieces ever of terrain. And so if we can get something similar to that, that would look awesome on the battlefield. I'd really be happy if they did that. And as I mentioned in yesterday's video, when I went through the Hunters of Huanchi, it would be cool if the next two terrain sets really are based on this labyrinth of the uh, crashed starship. So that would be cool. We're starting to see some more chunky pieces of the actual ship. I'd love to see that. Let me know what you're hoping to see in the next few sets and also what you think about what we've seen here in this video for the Jade Obelisk. Do you like what you see? Were you hoping for a bit more? And how do you feel about the fact that they're tied in with that obelisk uh, bearer so much? Let me know down in the comment section below. Looking forward to reading what you think. If you're interested in picking up this new Warcry box set, then when it's available to pre-order, please check out Firestorm Games. I'll put a link in the description down below. And if you use this code, WeekendWarrior5, put that in at checkout, you'll save an additional 5% on top of the already great savings. And this box set has been confirmed now at £110, so with potential of up to 20% off now, certainly when you use this extra 5% code, I think it could be a pretty decent price for what's included, especially if you didn't get that first box set already. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and if we get any more information about this new Warcry set and these warbands before the pre-order this week, I'll certainly cover it here on the channel. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one, and don't forget to hit that notification bell too to join me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Game. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>